Get live reports from the sidelines throughout our game. Follow Aaron Dugan on Twitter at AaronFox56. It's the start of a new season on MyTV WQMY. Hi everyone, I'm Amanda Cool from Fox 56 Sports. Tonight we get our season underway with a Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference matchup between Clarion from the West and Lock Haven from the East. Here's what to look for in tonight's game. The Bald Eagles have a new coach in Dave Tanner who comes to Lock Haven from Urbana University. The Bald Eagles will run a high tempo offense that includes returning quarterback Caleb Walton. This will mark the 63rd time these two schools have played. However, it's their first meeting since 2013. I'll be back at halftime to give you a peek at the entire Fox 56 sports schedule on my TV. Let's get you out to Lock Haven for tonight's game. He's got five and always going to reach for the end zone through the 45. He gets in, one guy to score. Switch his head and see you later. Fox 56 Sports presents the rivalry of the week on My TV WQMY, presented by Lock Haven University. This is Hubert Jack Stadium on a hot, humid evening in Lock Haven, Pennsylvania. Tonight, it's Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference football as the Clarion Golden Eagles take on the Lock Haven Bald Eagles. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Ide, and welcome to another season of live local sports here on MyTV WQMY. We have a great game for you tonight in the PSAC, and joining me topside, former Wilkes University head football coach Joe DeMelfi. And Joe, a new era here for Lock Haven after a 2 9 season a year ago. One consistent, though, for Co Coach Tanner, he does have Caleb Walton starting tonight for the 17th consecutive time. Coach Tanner came in after spring ball, so didn't have that benefit was looking for someone that had the capability to run an up-tempo offense. Caleb Walton is that guy, 2,000 plus yards in three years passing. Not too bad. Well, on the defensive side, they should be solid again this year. They lose their losing uh, leading tackler from a year ago, but Tony Ballon is gonna pick up the pace. Tony Ballon, 74 tackles last year. Very mobile inside, can get to the ball and can make a tackle. We talked to Coach Tainer yesterday. He gave us some keys to the game for his team. What are they? I think one of the things fundamentals, you got to have to block and tackle to win a football game. And then you have your turnovers, special teams, and how does the team react to a new coach? We've been through three weeks of preseason, but now it's for real. Well, we'll find out. We'll talk to Coach Tainer on the other side. We'll also have the starting lineups and the opening kick. It's live local college football on my TV, WQMY. This Fox 56 sports presentation of college football on my TV WQMY is brought to you by Lock Haven University. We are back at Hubert Jack Stadium live, getting ready for tonight's PSAC game for Clarion versus Lock Haven. We talked about a brand new coach over from Urbana University. Let's hear what coach Dave Tainer has to say before his first game here in Lock Haven. Aaron? Well, it's your first game as head coach here at Lock Haven. You got quite the atmosphere behind you. How are you feeling right now? Feeling great. We have an awesome atmosphere, great crowd out here for the first game. It's time to go out and test ourselves. You know, we've had a great camp. It's time to go play ball. You're known for that fast, high-powered offense. Is that what we'll see to get this game started? We're going to be moving as fast as we can, getting as many plays as we can, and trying to keep our operations as efficient as possible. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you. Bob? Well, good luck to Coach. And we, Since he is running the high-paced offense, we wanted to give you an opportunity to meet the starters for both teams so that we, we didn't have to rush through it when Lockhaven or Clarion has the ball. So let's meet the starters for tonight's game. First up for Lockhaven, both Swales returns in the – the backfield. He rushed for 598 yards a year ago. 3.1 average. Very talented wide receivers. We'll see a lot of them. Dan Krupko comes over from Urbana. He did catch 12 passes a year ago for a touchdown. Very experienced, very knowledgeable of the offense. Up front, they're big, strong, some experience, but young. Luke Erdman leading the way out of Lion Mountain High School, making his 31st consecutive start. Clarion now, defense also very good up front. Let's take a look at them right now. Kwame Bell out of Philadelphia. 55 tackles a year ago out of his defensive end position. Just two linebackers. Rocco Trafford, 75 tackles a year ago for the senior. 
five secondary players tonight, led by two three-year starters, Chris Liberto and Corey McNamara. Now let's take a look at the offense for the Clarion Golden Eagles, two and nine a year ago. They averaged 20 points per game. We'll see two quarterbacks. Connor Simmons gets the start. Started eight games a year ago, threw for 1,800 yards, nine interceptions, and 13 TDs. Another experienced guy in the backfield, Delrisa Williams. We'll see him. Wide receivers, very talented again. Some experience, Matt Lehman. 25 catches a year ago, 540 yards, and two touchdowns. Up front, Clarion's led by the Crest brothers, two senior tack, two senior players, Cameron and Shane. They both go around 285. And now finally, the Lock Haven defense gave up 28 points a year ago. Not very experienced at all. The only one back, Jake Peck, is a redshirt junior. 25 tackles a year ago. All the other players up front making their first collegiate starts. The linebackers, we talked about Tony Ballin, but Delvin Williams, very impressive in camp. He's a redshirt sophomore out of Johnstown. He had 14 tackles. We'll also see Carmelo Cruz back there as well. And some experience in the secondary for Lockhaven. Daniel Strawbridge and Tere Anderson both return. Both had some breakups last year and some interceptions. They're going to have to lead that secondary that lost George Christus, their safety, from a year ago. So we are all set here at Lockhaven University. Get ready for the kickoff. The weather tonight, very clear. We just had a couple storms move by us. 82 degrees at kickoff, sunny. So humidity just around 60%. Joe, how's that going to play out in the game? I'll tell you what, it's much cooler now, Bob, than it was an hour and a half, two hours ago. So I think uh, it should play a part, but not a great part. What I'm interested in seeing, because Coach Tainer and Lock Havens hurry up offense, how many people Clarion defensively will have their hands on the ground? Is he going to have nine people up? standing or will he have four people down and seven people up He's, clarion is starting five defensive backs so lockhaven will kick off to clarion so we'll see an experienced lockhaven defense so i'll have to take a possession or two to check out that high powered offense that dave tanner has brought back over from urbana university alex bumeri returns to do the kickoffs and the PATs. He was seven for 15 a year ago in field goals. He did have a long of 44, so we'll have to watch out for him. Bob, one of the things defensively, Lock Haven kept the same coordinator from a year ago, Coach Roberts. So I, I'm sure that helped the transition with Coach Tainer. And we are underway for the 2015 season. Varian Kyle Evans has it, and he'll take it out right around the 27-yard line. So that's where we will see the Clarion offense. The Golden Eagles a year ago rushed for 189 yards per game. They threw for 189, 278-yard total yards per game. Just 12 fumbles they lost. Time of possession around 28 minutes. But here's the key, Joe. They gave up 31 sacks to Clarion, so look for that early on. One of the things you have to have is a very strong, efficient offensive line. Let's see what uh, Clarion comes up with as they start from their own 32. So Simmons is the quarterback out of New Palestine, Indiana. Eight starts a year ago. Single back, two wideouts. They'll hand it off to Williams. Couple yards on that play, and it looked like Kwame Bell had the, the stop. Backside, very, very quick pressure from the backside for Lock Haven. You're gonna have to be careful because once you start that kind of pressure, they'll come back with something to the other side. Yeah, with Joe, we talked about the inexperience up front of the defense for Lock Haven, so we'll have to see how they play early on. They did get very tested in practice, though, with the way they run plays here during the spring season and the offseason. First throw of the game is out, and it's caught by Lehman for the first down of the season for the Golden Eagles, and that comes out to about the 37-yard line. Great.
great job by the wide receiver. Was able to make that stop route just after the first down marker. Good throw. Clarion will move the chains. Tyree Anderson, the senior out of Bishop McDevitt, very experienced, made the tackle. As well as the receiver, the defensive back has to know where the marker is also in that first down situation. Quarterback rolls out some pressure, throw it out, intended for Eric Fry on the backside. I'll tell you what, um, Brandon Clements, number 90, did a nice job of recovering, coming out and making sure that the quarterback couldn't square his shoulders up. Finally had to throw it away. Clements, a redshirt freshman, 6'2", 230 pounds. There you see Simmons. In 10 games that he did play a year ago, 13 touchdowns, did have a long throw of 76 yards. Can run the ball a little bit, five touchdowns. Lockhaven backs up on the blitz. They will send the outside back. Little quick hitter and a big pop in the secondary from Isaiah Flammer out of Coatesville. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, Flammer did a great job jumping. They, they ran five wide, empty backfield. Flammer jumps this short. That was the play before. Play before, yep. So a big third down here. For the Lock Haven defense. Like to get off the field and give their high powered offense a chance to score here in the first. Looks like another outside blitz coming. Quarterback maybe checking off. Goes downhill, overthrows his intended receiver. Good job. That was for secondary. their tight end. Bob had an under and an over. Tried to make that throw. Couldn't do it. So Claren will punt it away. Good job by that Lock Haven defense to start. Mike Williams back to receive. Here you look at it again. That's the That's play the before. That was the big hit in the middle by Flamer. Did a nice job reading that. The receiver made the catch, but there was no yardage after. So Bryce Stanball comes on. He's a senior. A year ago, averaged 39 yards on his punt. Mike Williams back to receive for the Bald Eagles. He'll have room to run, takes it at the 15-yard line. Has an opening on the right-hand side, but a great backside play for Clarion, who makes the stop. That looks like it was number 12, Chris Miller. Miller did an excellent job running the ball carrier down. Lock Haven starts their offense. Buckle your belts. Going to be a fast ride from now on. One of the things that Coach Tanner talked about was we're going to run it efficiently. Let's see. Uh, Wants to run a play every 20 seconds or less. So Oregon, Philadelphia Eagles. If you're fans of those teams, that's what the offense they want. Caleb Walden, though, has picked it up very quickly. Four people down, seven standing for Clarion. Quick hit, first down. Premise of the offense, Bob, is Get the ball to the receiver, let him be one-on-one, -on -one. pick up yardage, you picked up a first down on that pass. Sean Seif out of Harrisburg makes the first catch from Walton. Here we go. Play clock at 25. 10 seconds to get off. Both swales in the middle, nowhere to go. Maybe a gain of one. We have a helmet off for a Clarion player. So the offensive line gonna be tested. Joe, coach talked about that yesterday a, a little bit. He wants to be physical up front. I'll tell you what, though, that tough to run that early because that defensive line is right there. Tried to run that read type uh, option. A year ago, they averaged 16 points per game. Walton carries on the zone read. A couple yards, so a big third down now coming up for the Bald Eagles. Fake the zoom. Walton kept the ball right up the middle, but again, that Clarion defensive front doing an excellent job for no game. We have a third and about eight. Three wide outs, Walton calling the play. Comes the outside rush, backside almost got him. They have Swales. 
Swales with some room, just cannot get to the first down marker. Just about a half yard short. Let's see what Coach Tanner wants to do. Ball around the 45 and a half yard line. Right at the 45. It's a call at one yard. Yeah, we're gonna we're looking go for at it. a yard, and he looks like uh, he's going to roll the dice early. There you see the flare. That right. ball was thrown to the flare back, and he picked up about seven. Not quite the first down. Call the play, and I'll check off. We'll get the play from the sideline. We'll walt three wide outs and a tight end. Miley Garris in the backfield for Lockhaven. Five on the play clock. Player in rushing four. Quick, oh, kick. quick kick by Walton. Fair catch called, and that's where Clary will take over to 23. That's one thing that offense allows you to do because the quarterback has some depth, so you can get away with that, with that type of offense. So we're settling in here at Hubert Jack Stadium, looking over the beautiful town of Lockhaven in Clinton County, Pennsylvania. This is a team, remember, some years ago, when 0 and 52 over a lifespan of a couple years, finally broke that. Keep trying to work their way up. The coach who was here last year, Coach Allen, has departed. Two years for him. Coach Tanner comes in, very excited. They are in out quickly. Play had designs to be real big. Wide receiver to that side missed the block. Tyree Anderson with another stop for him. Now you'll see Clarion not huddle up. And what this does, Coach, does it doesn't give an opportunity for the defense to getting substitutions in. Substitution, that's the big thing. He'll give it to Williams in the middle. He has a nice gain. Going to be close to a first down. They're going to be about a yard short, Bob, on the third down situation. There you see the quick hitter right at it, Jake Peck. In on the tackle. Signal the first. Looked like uh, he was going to be short. Here comes the rush downfield, wide open. They have a receiver, does Clarion. That's number seven, Kevin Ginevro, a junior out of St. Mary's, makes I'll, the catch. I'll tell you one of the things, number seven, Ginevro, right off the line of scrimmage. Nobody touched him. Now we're going to have a call, holding call, I believe, and it's going to bring that play back. But the receiver, untouched, was able to get down the field. You have to have some sort of... Uh... So a break there for the Bald Eagles. Yeah, you have, defensively, you have to have some sort of pressure there, or else if you let the receiver off free access, they can most of the time get open. Luckily, there was a hold call on Clarion for Lock Haven. Referee tonight, Eric Lewis and his team. Okay, so that backs them up. First and 25 now for Clarion. But remember that play for later in the game. Safeties have to come up big this year. That's where they lost their leading tackler. Little quick out is overthrown, trying to hit Williams out of the backfield. Yeah, that play designed to get the running back on the linebacker. Maybe he can pick up big yardage. As you look at Coach Tainer talking to Walton. Now you talked about that. How are they going to react early on? I mean, they're not used to each other during a game. Practice is one thing, game is another. Caleb Walton, though, does have a great head on his shoulder, so very smart kid. Clarion gets the play from their sidelines. Quick out to Lehman. Anderson unable to get out there, give him a little bit too much room. So third and long now coming up. Anderson, good job making that a short game, though, because he knew it was going to be a, 
a third and long situation. Didn't want to give up the big play. It seemed like they're staying away from the other side. Daniel Strawbridge, 81 tackles a year ago, four interceptions. Number six, team showing signs to keep going to the number eight side to Ray Anderson. Strawbridge now on the near side. Big third down again. Going to go over the top against Strawbridge. Great catch by Lehman inside Lockhaven territory at the 38. I tell you what, what it becomes, Bob, it becomes a jump ball situation. Clarion receiver with an excellent Matt Lehman, excellent catch going up high over Strawbridge. Right there you see it. They'll mark him down right at the 39-yard line. Gain of 43, so another big play for the Bald Eagles. Second drive of the game for them. Inside penetration from Ballin, but Williams was able to hop that and picked up a gain of about four. Claren run a little bit of a counter. Williams comes up with a nice play defensively. Williams out of Steel Valley High in his high school days in 2010. When he was a senior. He rushed for 2,388 yards and 24 TDs. And that was a Whippeal record. The rushing yards, that is, for Williams. So he does have some talent, just a sophomore. Looking for big things for him this year. Give it to Williams. Bounces off a player and has the outside. Strawbridge chases him out, but not before. First down and much more for Williams inside the 20 at the 19. When you're outside the ball carrier, Bob, and you close on him, if you let him get on your outside shoulder, there's a problem. That's exactly what happened there. Gain of 16 for Williams. So the running game opening up holes once again for the Golden Eagles. Clarion start this drive at their own 24-yard line at the 10-45 mark. Simmons over the middle, chased by two players, but they're unable to get number 34, Kyle Evans, the freshman, and he's in for a Clarion touchdown. Evans had time to cross come across the defense. Excellent job by the offensive line blocking. Plenty of time for the quarterback, Simmons, to make that throw. Touchdown, Clarion. So Clarion marches the field. 76 yards, eight yards, uh, eight plays, excuse me, 403 off the clock. Airs in for the extra point. It is up and it is true. And Clarion takes the early 7-0 lead with 6.42 on the clock. Now we have a special guest with our own Aaron Dugan. Back at the Haven. It's great to be back. Tell me a little bit about what makes this university so special. Well, I think you can see that tonight. One of the things about Lock Haven and, and the university is that there's a true family environment. It's a culture of support and giving, and our students really feel that, our faculty and staff do, and I, I think that makes the difference for us. How about some of the priorities that you have here? Well, obviously one of the major priorities is advancing our academic programs and making certain that what we offer our students really does lead them to a, a successful professional career. In addition, we want our students to really be good citizens and understand the importance of citizenry and, and democracy. You talked a little bit before about the students here at the game, and you always have such a great crowd. How excited was everybody to get back out here for football season? I think it was probably the most exciting opening of school that we had. There was an awful lot of uh, discussion and in, in, um, just general talk about the football season and about the opening of school, and you could feel that excitement in the air. It's, it's really you know, just wonderful to have. And a brand new head coach, tell us about that yeah. process. Well, we went through an extensive national search for a new head coach, 
Uh, we feel really comfortable that Dave is the right person for us, that he's bringing a new style of football, and that's just going to build on what Coach Allen did. All right, well, thanks so much for stopping to chat with us. Nice to have you. All right, let's go back upstairs. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you to everyone here at Lockhaven and welcoming us in once again. One of two games we'll have here on my TV from the Bald Eagles. We'll be back October 17th when this team takes on Cheney for homecoming. So impressions of that drive from Clary and Joe? Bob, I have to, one of the things when you look at pass defense, you have rush three, drop eight, rush four, drop seven, rush five, drop six. Right now, rush four, drop seven is not really working for Lock Haven. Let's see if they make any type of adjustment. So the big kick down to Williams. He has some room, he ball the turf, and it rolls out of bounds. I think it was Lock Haven ball before it trickled out. And that was Mike Williams in there, the senior out of Whitehall who coughed it up. But Lock Haven retains possession, a big break there at the 31. Very big break. You didn't want to give up a touchdown and then have to give it up on a fumble. And here you see the replay. Oh, so he gets hit in there. For number right. 54, Jacob Craig. Right on the ball. Right, he made that tackle right on the ball. Now let's see if the Bald Eagles can answer the Golden Eagles. Walton back on for his second possession in 2015. Some movement up front. Everyone's pointing at everybody else. Okay, this is what I'm talking about, Bob. Early on, you start running into a little, a little bit of a problem. Okay, let's see how everybody takes to grouping together. Let's get this thing going. Walton faked the pitch, but number 99, Brandon Short, didn't react at all, makes a nice play. Short snap, almost like a single wing play, Bob. Short snap, take a step to the line of scrimmage. That back is now an option back. Walton kept the ball as to go to the line of scrimmage again. Walton again back to the other side. Sean Seif with the carry. Just a minimal gain, so third and long now. One of the things that Lock Haven's going to have to do is test it downfield, try to go vertical, stretch the field, so some of that underneath stuff, those passes are able to open up. Here comes a rush from the outside. Number 99 again, short, with three and a half sacks a year ago, takes down Walton. I'll tell you what, he came up the field was outside, but able to get a hand on Caleb Walton. Lock Haven going to a pump formation. Here you see it. Just got enough of a hand on him to bring him down, plus that inside pressure by Clarion. Walton didn't have a lot of places to go. Big rush put on, almost blocked by the Golden Eagles. Fair catch signaled at the 45. And that's where the Clarion team will take over one more time. But Clarion has a new coach, sort of. He was the offensive coordinator the last two seasons, Chris Weibel, his first season overall. It's 12th at Clarion. Former quarterback there in 1996. Led Clarion that year to 11-3 record and the Final Four. So there's some history with the Golden Eagles and with their new head coach. They finished two and nine a year ago, two of seven in the PSAC West. So there's a West versus East showdown here in week number one. Simmons out, has a wide open receiver. That's Lehman. Lehman down again inside the 45 for another first down for Clarion. Excellent job by the number nine for Clarion. Excellent job, Fry. Eric Fry is able to get up on the defender after the catch. Receiver was able to pick up the first down, but Fry did an excellent job tying that defender up. Looks like 
McLaren right now keeping the defense off balance. They're not, they don't know where they're going with the ball. And they're only able, they're able to run it. Not on that play. Ballin comes in, says he's had enough of this, makes the initial hit behind the backfield, minimal game. We talked about him early on in pregame, uh, Bob, and he's done an excellent job right there. They ran a little counter action. Ballin right there. Bring the ball carrier down, minimal gain. So Clarion holding most of the possession time here in this first quarter. One score, over the middle again. Out of, in and out of the hands of, looks like the tight end. Zach Dietrich was the intended receiver. Yeah, they went to the tight end, been making the throws to the wide out, tried to get the tight end across the middle, sort of sneak him into the pattern. Incomplete, we're looking at a third and about eight for Clarion. 120 yards of total offense for Clarion. Lockhaven has no yards rushing, 19 total offense. Simmons out wide open as a Clarion receiver, Eric Fry again, you talked about him. I'll tell you what, Fry did an excellent job finding the open space. They were two men, two defensive men within five yards. Fry slid it inside, quarterback, excellent job of finding him. Well, Lockhaven a year ago gave up 28 points per game, 239 through the air, 177 on the ground. They did have 17 interceptions, 28 sacks as a team. Coach Moore is back. He's the defensive coordinator. He was retained when the new regime came in. Williams. Ballin broke that play up nicely in the backfield, Coach. I'll tell you what happened. He blew it up. The offensive lineman was knocked backward. The back really didn't have any place to go. Maybe a half-yard gain. Brandon Bernazzoli in with the tackle. Here you see it right there. You brought, Ballin brought the offensive lineman down and again caused the back to stutter step. By that time, defense was able to get there. So the play clock down to 10 for Clarion. Again, second time tonight inside Lockhaven territory. Williams blasted again behind the line of scrimmage. This time, Duran Lee in the free safety. I'll tell you what he did. He got up the field right now to make that tackle. One of the things, if you're clearing, you're looking at that saying, the safety made a tackle in the backfield. Maybe we ought to look at going with some type of play action. Let's see if they're able to do that. Coming in, Clarion completed 28% a year ago on third down. Tonight, two for three on third down efficiency. Here comes the rush from the outside. They can't get to the quarterback. Picked off, Lockhaven with the ball. Big interception as the tip went. Right to number 10, Rajir Miles Eubanks. Miles Eubank, tip drill, that's why you do it. Ball in the air, you, Miles Eubank went after it. Here you're gonna see it. Receiver couldn't quite, a little high. Receiver couldn't break it down. Now let's see if the Lockhaven offense back on quickly if they can get anything going. Right now, the Clarion defense has been teeing off on them just about every play. Four wideouts. Over the middle they go, and Walton just missed his receiver, and he wants a flag, and that is Seif. Thought he was held at the line of scrimmage. I tell you what, it's a matter of interpretation by the official. If you don't want to give that guy free release, so you got to try to get your hands on him which is what happened there. Just one first down for Lockhaven so far, 19 total yards. Out to Swales, he's wrapped up quickly, but he uh, gained about seven on that, so third and short coming up. One of the things you have to do a little bit is rush the football. I don't care what kind of offense you're running. 
Lockhaven having problem with that right now as Walton lines up on the third and about five. Just one first down for Lockhaven. Coach Tanner told us he wants to see between 22 and 26 first downs for them have, to have a chance to win the game. That's what it's going to take. Right now they haven't had that efficiency. Walton does a nice job finding a receiver over the middle. It's caught. That's number two in there for Lockhaven, who makes a nice catch. David Cook, Richard Sr. I'll tell you what Cook did. He, he Again, he set himself. He found the space between two defensive players and then turns it up for good yardage. Cook, 530 yards a year ago. Swales can't get the block he needs up front. And shooting in, Rocco Trafford, the senior linebacker, makes I'll tell the tackle. you what, nobody laid a hand on him. And Kwame uh, he, Bell also there. He was able to, Trafford was able to be up the field right now. First time tonight, Lockhaven in territory of Clarion. Walton with a nice job keeping, has room to run, picks up 12, down to the 31. That's what you like to see out of that offense. Number one, it was a great fake. If the defense can't find the ball, they can't find the ball carrier, and that's what happened there. Walton did an excellent job on the fake. Finally, a little rhythm from this offense. Walton feeling it. Out to Krupko, loses the ball. Picked up by Clarion, a big turnover. Let's see what the call is here. Didn't know if he had possession or not. I don't know if we'll get a chance to look at that. Uh -oh. Coach Tanner wants to see it again. It's a catch. Yeah, he was, uh, he was the ball carrier. He had the ball and took a couple of steps. Yeah. Miles Edmonds, the sophomore, caused that fumble. So just like that, Lockhaven with a big turnover, stopped that drive. They what, had things going. What did we talk about pregame, Bob? Turnovers. Turnovers. I mean, you can't, you have to cause them. You can't give them up. Lockhaven right now. Moving the ball, so each it was a team, nice offensive series. Each team has a turnover. Interception lock for Lockhaven and fumble for Clarion. So this may be the last play of, nope, they're going to take take a timeout. So 26 remaining in the first quarter. It's been all Clarion on the field here at Lockhaven. See if the Bald Eagles come back when we come back on the other side. This Fox 56 sports presentation of college football on my TV WQMY is brought to you by Lock Haven University. We're back in Lock Haven. PSAC football here on the robbery of the week on my TV. WQMY to an all clarion in this first quarter. Bob I, Joe DeMelfi topside here at Hubert Jack Stadium. Clarion with 130 yards total offense. And seeing why they keep that defense on their heels so far, coach. And now they have the ball back. They've rushed the ball well. They've able, been able to throw the ball extremely well, talking about Clarion. They're up seven. Lock Haven came back with a little bit of a drive, turnover. The most important thing, Clarion, they kept them off the ball. Get them out of the end zone that last time, last possession. Let's see if the defense again can make the stop before we head to quarter number two. <laughs> Trying to adjust the clock here, up to 27 seconds. For some reason it, it ran down. So tell you that the quarterback, Connor Simmons, the junior is eight for 13 tonight, 100 yards. Does have the interception. And a touchdown. They're gonna go back out to Lehman, his leading receiver, who makes the diving catch. Five yards on that play. It's a good first down efficiency for the Clarion offense. Double slant from those two wide receivers. He throws, um, Simmons throws the ball to the inside receiver. They pick up decent yardage as the clock will run out here in the first quarter. 
So the Dave Kaner era has one quarter in the books here at Lock Haven University. His bald eagles are down seven to the Golden Eagles from Clarion. Quarter number two is on the other side. This Fox 56 sports presentation of college football on my TV WQMY is brought to you by Lock Haven University. It's a whiteout here at Hubert Jack Stadium on the campus of Lock Haven University in Clinton County. All the student body out in their white defend our nest. And why not? But right now, their team down seven to Clarion, their rivals from about two hours away in the PSAC West. Well, we have a beautiful view of downtown Lock Haven and Lock Haven University looking over Susquehanna River in Clinton County, the West Branch. And right now, Lock Haven needs to put up that high powered offense. They showed some signs that, but they're relying on their defense here early on. Clarion controlled the ball most of that half. 10 minutes of possession time, coach. That means that defense has been on a lot. And Simmons was uh, 9 for 14. Need to put a little pressure on him, Bob. Number 10 offense. Well, that's Five good. yard penalty, second down. Well, a little movement there from the quarterback. Maybe that puts a little bit of pressure on now. Moving back five yards on second down, second and long coming up. Like what I saw the Clarion, oh, excuse me, the Lock Haven offense the last time they had the ball, uh, had a little rhythm going except for that play. And, and, you know, maybe they can get the ball back and carry that momentum. In that offense, you have to have some rhythm. At well, Again, the, why a receiver clearly off the line of scrimmage, Bob. Nobody near him. Again, I think the safeties are getting caught up front, and that was a, a big catch from Gennaro. Number seven. He's wide open downfield. Let's take a look at it again, Coach. No safeties there. Well, you're going to look at him. He just comes out. The backfield turns it up. Nobody has responsibility for him. Linebackers normally would have that responsibility. Nobody there. Good job by the Clarion staff. Sets that up is Clarion's been able to run the ball pretty good tonight. So they were looking for the run. Simmons back again. Over the middle again. He's got his receiver the same one two times in a row. Gennaro out of St. Mary's Elk County Catholic, the junior, two catches in a row. And Clarion's in business at the Lock Haven 11. I'll tell you what, look at the offensive line. X, look at the, uh, Bob, you or I, I think, could yeah. make that throw. There's nobody near him. No pressure, and the safeties are getting caught back. Linebackers are unable to cover their guy. So when you some play, problems on defense. When you play pass defense, it, it could turn into playground. You can only stay with them for so long. So we do have some of the second teamers. I say, you know, I say second teamers, but second man in the depth chart for Lock Haven to give those guys who started some water. And Clarion carries it inside. That's it's like Williams again. It's hard to tell. Inside the six, second down. They can't get a first down at the two. I think one of the discussions on the sideline or at half for Lock Haven will have to revolve around what can we do to start bothering Simmons, the quarterback for Clarion a little bit. This is actually Kadarius Campbell, who I thought he was a, he's a freshman. Ballon in there and Ballon did a Flamer. great job again with uh, Flamer. Ballon was able to stuff it at the hole and Flamer stepped in. So big third down here for the Bald Eagles defense. Need to make the stop, get just three. Little fade pattern. Knocked away. Good defense from Mike Williams, the senior out of Whitehall. Williams did an excellent job there. Number one, forcing the receiver to the sideline rather than 
him get inside because there he had a better chance. Gets his hand up, receiver's out of bounds. So we're gonna look at a field, possible field goal attempt. S looks like Esposito on over three a year ago. Field goal is up and it is good. Good 23 yards and Clarion takes the 10 nothing lead. We'll be right back on my TV WQMY. Oh, as you come into Lock Haven University, Main Street downtown, you see the Bell Tower looking over campus. At Lock Haven University in Clinton County. Well, their team down 10 to nothing. And lucky the defense held Clarion to a field goal coach. It was a seven play, 69 yard drive, took 305 off the clock. Lock Haven defensively did an excellent job as Clarion got into the red zone as the Golden Eagles kick it off. Two guys back. It looks like Malik Harris has the ball. Running around the wrong way. Where are they going to mark him? Up at the 12-yard line. So great special teams. Another one of those keys to the game we talked about. That Con time by Clarion. Connor Scott for Clarion did an excellent job on that kickoff coverage. Lock Cable will start their offense deep in their own territory. So Walton does come out. Harris will be in the backfield here to start the second quarter. There you see Luke Erdman, the center, making his 31st consecutive start. Walton back, has time. Has good speed, he run, can run if he wants to, he does, picks up about six yards. I'll tell you what, in that type of offense, that up-tempo, you need a quarterback that's able to make something happen. Walton's able to do that. He can throw it, he can run. That time he picked up about four or five yards on his own. As the pass situation broke down, he was able to get outside the defense. That time they give it to Harris. So third and short now coming up. Again, something that will help their offense a lot is able to pick up some yardage on the ground. That time, not much as we look at a third and short. Four-man rush. He has time. Can he dive? And will they give him? I don't think. I think he's a yard short. So fourth down again. Offense unable to pick up 10 on that. Almost forced into punting. And you know what that does to that type of offense? Frustration. Yep. You know, well, we should be able to move that ball, move that ball, pick up first downs, and that's not happening. Again, that goes back to how do I react as a player to that situation? So Stamball in. Senior punter, averaged 39 yards a year ago. The left. Footer hangs it high. Fair catch called for at the 47-yard line by Corey McNamara, and that's where they'll take over. Another special guest from Lock Haven now about to join us, and Aaron, who do you have? Well, Bob, I'm here now with Michael Hall, the Assistant Director of Admissions. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. So many students here tonight. What makes them choose Lock Haven as their home away from home? Well, there's quite a few reasons, actually. Number one, we have the right people here. Our students have a chance to really work with faculty in the classroom to learn and research and really become experts in their field. Um, secondly is our location. We might have the best view in all of college football, um, but bottom line is it's a convenient location right in north central Pennsylvania. And bottom line, it's, it's safe. Our students can really focus on their studies here. And I think last but not least, a lot of students tell us it's the right choice due to um, affordability, but more importantly than that, the value for what they get for their money. And we prepare them to, to go on and do great things. When you talk about preparing them for great things, what are the majors that the kids are really enjoying? What are the, some of the popular ones? Well, I think our most popular majors right now would be health science, uh, criminal justice, communications, sport administration, accounting, business, recreation management. 
there's a wide variety. I think no matter what major a student chooses, what, what makes us unique is that we, we're, we have a liberal arts foundation. So our students become experts at a lot of things, and we really challenge them to think critically. So being in admissions, you deal with a lot of high school students. Do you have any advice for juniors, even some seniors, thinking about where they might want to go? Well, as far as juniors go, it's definitely a great time to start thinking about college. Think about taking that pre-SAT and certainly gearing up for the SAT in the spring. Seniors, now's your time. You need to get your application out there. You need to think about visiting campus. Our first open house program is coming up October 24th. Best part of the day, you meet faculty, staff, but you get free lunch. So you should really think about coming up. Can I come then? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> and how about seniors that have they already know where they're going to college? What steps should they take? Um, seniors who know where they're going, it's a good idea to do one last visit. Make sure you have your things in order. Um, bottom line, get those visits in. Come up and see us. Um, make sure you stay in touch with your admissions counselors and finish strong your senior year. Okay, well, thank you so much for the information. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Let's go back up to you guys. Yeah, it is a great view up here. We can attest to that, as I mentioned before. On the field, Clarion has the ball on third down. Lockhaven defense trying to make another stop. Quickly out. Let's see where they're going to mark it. That good defense out there the, by the linebacker Williams to get out there. I'll tell you what, uh, the good help by Williams. I think Clarion will be just short. I also believe they'll go for it since they're on the Lock Haven side of the ball. What set up the, this situation is that screen pass while Aaron was interviewing. The screen pass was well run by Clarion. It's caught by Mark Nicholas out there, 6'1 senior, number six. Coach talked about Williams yesterday. He's just a redshirt sophomore of Johnstown, 14 tackles a year ago, Coach, but he really liked his progress in camp. I'll tell you, one of the things I've seen from him, he's able to move very well, and he's physical enough to, to make a strong tackle once he's there. As the officials take a look at it. Well, next week, Lockhaven heads on the road to Seton Hill, 1 p.m. kick out there. And here is that play by Williams. As I said, he's strong enough, he's quick enough to get out there, strong enough to bring the re receiver down. Oh, well, here's the fundamental right now. You have to watch the snap. You don't want to give them an easy five. Got to make your tackle. Now it's tough on a spread offense. See where they're going to run. Give it to Williams, and he'll die forward. Get Yard and a half gain, just enough for another first down. It's the 10th of the night for the Golden Eagles. One of the things that I have a problem with in that offense on third and short is you have third and maybe uh, six inches, but your quarterback's three or four yards deep, yeah. and uh, it's going to take a little while for him to get there, or the fullback, whoever's or running no, the ball. Or no fullback, and exactly. that's part of the problem, too. Yeah. So Clarion tonight averaging seven yards per play. Lockhaven needs to get that down. Simmons again over the middle, has a receiver. They've been going to that well all night long. And that was number 15, Trayvon Gaines. Oh, excuse me, Gage Clark, the tight end, sophomore. Yeah, he inside, quick release because now the backer to that side is a little wider, so they have him up the field. Williams is going to have to start splitting the difference between the tight end and the wide receiver, so he's able to get a touch on. Or the, the tight slot, which is where the receiver is now. Simmons going long. Oh, all kinds of stuff going on down field around the 10. I think some feet just got wrapped up. Yeah, no call. In fact, Lehman down there for Clarion. The other side looked like the receiver was wide open. Let's see if he comes back to the huddle. To the top of your screen, looked like the receiver was going to be open. Down below, there were two or three defenders in the receiver. They ran into each other. No call from the official. About time the secondary paid off, but let's see what play they come back to. Now for Clarion. 11 first downs for the Golden Eagles. 12.42 of possession time. Give it over to Campbell, the freshman. Wrapped up quickly, three yards on that. 
Yeah, B Bolin was out there along with Williams. Did an excellent job. Looked like the running back was going to bounce it outside for some yardage. There you see Bolin coming. Now Williams and Strawbridge. Strawbridge did an excellent job coming up to make the tackle. Those are the three guys that are going to have to lead this defense in 2015. So the first game underway here for us here on my TV. It's back to high school football next week as we'll head to Lewisburg. Right now, PSAC action, West versus East. Right now, the West is up 10 to nothing. So another big third down for the defense. Here comes the blitz that can't get to him, and he finds his receiver. Lehman again with a big, big catch. Eubanks on the tackle. I'll tell you what Lehman does. He does that stop route right in front of the defensive back and he is big enough that when he does the stop route, it's tough to get over the top of him, and he goes up high to bring it down. Good route, good throw. Lehman 6'3", 200-pound junior out of Burrell High School. The other thing is the offensive line is doing a nice job on protecting. Excellent. And that, give credit right there. Excellent job by Clarion's offensive line. So another drive taking a lot of time off the clock. Simmons out. Finds his tight end again. Clark out of Highlands High School. Clark's almost running a delay pattern there. Simmons takes the ball, makes the fake. And there you see Clark. He makes the block and then starts the drift. Simmons got that ball a little bit behind him. But one of the things it does, it gives Simmons, as he gets to the corner without pressure, time to find Clark in the open area. Clarion started this on the 47 with 10 minutes on the clock, 10.47 to be exact. Tenth play of the drive. Campbell inside the freshman. Wrapped up quickly on the inside by hosts of Lock Haven players, including Williams and Ballin, who loses his helmet. Number four must leave the game for one play. One of the things we talked about early was the possibility of conditioning. Lock Haven defense on the field a lot. See how it affects them as we get into the second half with 5.30 left here in the uh, second quarter. We well, figure they're gonna be on no matter what a lot because the offense is supposed to score quickly and move at a fast pace, so they're already at a disadvantage as soon as they hit the field. On top of that, the offense has been able to do nothing for Lockhaven, so they're even on the field more. Campbell inside, puts his head down. First and goal, second and goal on the way. Jeff Pickle was in on that tackle as we look at second and goal, as you mentioned, Bob. There you see Pickle sticking his Pickle head in there. Nice. Along with Bernazzoli. Another hand off to Campbell. Has a hole. Touchdown. Golden Eagles. Going right at the front. I'll tell you what. Clarence offensive line doing a very nice job. Fine. They're able to open up just enough of a crease so the back's able to find the goal line as we have a Clarion player down. That we do. That is looks like number 70. Rodolfo Ceniceros, the sophomore, is down for Clarion and a little bit of pain. So that that drive, 12 plays, 53 yards, more importantly, 6.07 off the clock. Coach Joe DeMelfi. Definitely T.O.P. on the side of Clarion. One of the things now, with we have 4.38, 4.40 left here in the second quarter. There's Hold that thought, and uh, hey, these two teams are very familiar with each other. Clarion leads the all-time series, 46 to 16. The first meeting, coach back in 1928, won by Lockhaven, and last meeting between these two teams was at Clarion. Lockhaven lost that one. Clarion, in fact, has a six-game winning streak. Lockhaven's last win, 2006.
seven. Of course, these two teams were in the west of the PSAC for a long time, so they played each other, each other regularly. But three years ago, Lockhaven came back over, and last year they weren't able to play. The Coach Tanner's conversation yesterday, Bob, with us, talked about, and as you watch the Clarion offensive line open that up for the touchdown, we talked about the number of first downs. It'll be interesting to see at half what that looks like. Well, right now it's 13 to three in favor of Clarion, as you might expect. So Esposito on for another extra point. He already has a field goal tonight, his first in 2015. And looks like Lockhaven could find themselves down 17 nothing with 440 remaining in this game. Yeah, first half, excuse me. The left-handed kick is up and it is through. So 440 left in the half. Lockhaven finds themselves down by 17. This Fox 56 Sports presentation of college football on my TV WQMY is brought to you by Lockhaven University. Back in Clinton County on my TV WQMY, it's the robbery of the week. Week number one. I got the bus ready to go. The trucks are all gassed up. It's going to be a busy, I don't know, 15 weeks, we hope. Take it all the way down to, hopefully, to the playoffs for high school football. We'll be back here again in October for Lockhaven. A couple more after that in January and April. So I want to thank everyone in the administration here at Lockhaven University for welcoming us here on my TV and throughout the state of Pennsylvania. So another kickoff and another try now for Lockhaven. Let's see what they're going to do. How about a fake the reverse? Nobody's faked out. Harris is pulled down quickly on the outside by number 84, David Jokin, the sophomore. Another good play by the Claren special teams. Always important. We have a flag down. Let's see what uh, what that brings in. Well, we faked out our own camera people. <laughs> hey, it's early on for us too, you know. But the eight, big 84. Unsportsmanlike conduct. 33, defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, big play. Big call there for Lockheed. to give them out of, you know, they were in shadow of their own end zone at the 11. They'll give them 15 on that as the play was called an Asamoa unsportsmanlike conduct. So that will bring it out to the 26. So, Coach Tanner, you want to put anything point-wise on the board at this point going into the half. I'll tell you what, you're right, uh, Bob. Settle for seven, six, or three. Let's see how that Lockhaven offense responds. Going to go quickly down the middle of the Krupp goal, and he curls it in for a big gain all the way to the 39. Runs that slant pass. Right in front of the defender, picks up the first down. Defense unable to get back. Walton takes advantage, picks up five on that. Calls, nice. Wants the pace pick up. Finding a little bit of rhythm here as the defense now. Well, if anything, the offense is well rested. So they should be able to pick up the rhythm. Swales inside has a little hole. Picks up four, third and short coming up. So Bo Swales has a call in his name a lot. Had two touchdowns a year ago out of Clearfield. Senior. Coach Tanner, sideline, keep the, keep wants to get moving. Let's go. Quicker the better. Wallen over the middle. Caught. Nice job on the curl on the inside by Seif. So Lockhaven again now, third time tonight inside Clarion territory, unable to put up any points quickly. A 
want to add up those first downs if you're lock haven. Gonna go down the middle. Has a receiver. Are they gonna call it caught? Yeah, they do. Great catch by David Cook, the senior out of Boiling Springs. Ran a great route across the middle. Wide open. Gonna pull it down at the 16, clock rolls. Walled up quickly, they ran down. Tight end to the left. And we're gonna have a stoppage on the play, so we will have time now. Timeout on the field for Clarion. So here's that replay of that big catch from Cook. Great job by the offensive line. Walton makes a great throw and an excellent catch by Cook across the middle. Had the secondary spread. Nobody really broke on the ball or the receiver. But again, we have to go back. Offensive line did a nice job giving Walton time to make the throw. Well, we saw Dave Tanner coming from Urbana University. He wants that up-tempo Oregon-type offense. Run the play as fast as you can. Right now paying dividends here. Let's take a look at him. Talk to him before the game. Seven seasons at his alma mater. It was 37-40 overall. The most successful overall from 2009 to 13. And they broke 50 offensive records in six years at Urbana. Can he bring that success now to the PSAC? That's the question. We talked about the importance of this offense getting some scoring power. And I'll tell you what. Flag down on the play. Yeah, and I don't know if it's going to be a face mask. Brandon Short up the field right now, but I think they're going to call a face mask on That's him. a lock haven calls. Face they mask. do. 99. Oh. Half the distance, automatic first down. So the face mask was at the up inside the 20, so it's a it'll be a half the distance scenario. Oh, big, no, big break. Oh, big break. Huge. Huge. Biggest break of the night. Lock even has had some big breaks, but this one, let's see if they can take advantage of. First down at the 12. Walton and company getting ready to go. Tied into the left. Pull it down to the end zone. Touchdown, Lockhaven. Excellent job. I tell you what, the two wide receivers there. Seif. Seif did an excellent job on the catch, but the two wide receivers throws the defensive back. One ran to his outside. They didn't have it, they being Clarion, no underneath coverage, and Seif makes the catch on a nice throw from Walton. Well, it didn't take long at all. How about in six plays, 73 yards in a minute 45? Not much break for the defense. They've been on the field a lot in this first half, and the Clarion team will have 247 left. But that will get the juices flowing. Your team, your offense comes right back, put up some points on the board. The extra point by Grimari is up, and it is good. So Lockhaven gets on the board. They cut the Clarion lead to 10, 250 left in this half. Woo, catch your breath, coach, because yeah. that was up and down fast. Let's Here it is, the catch for the it's that fake to Swales, Coach, and that really did it. I tell you what, excellent job. Again, there was a receiver outside that defensive back, one inside, and the underneath cover just wasn't there. So Seep had the touchdown. Hey, ROTC, time to do some push-ups. I don't see Aaron down there doing any. It is a little warm, though. So 145 off the clock, and they moved it down quickly. And Coach Tanner had a big smile on his face. Said, boys, that's how it's done. Now if we can just stop Clarion, we'll be okay. Well, I think one of the things that you're right, Bob, we go to the locker room and say, hey, this is what I've been telling you. Yeah. This is what the offense can bring. Yep. Now we just have to get the defense caught up. 
Now, first, we've got to stop the defense here. Maybe we get the ball back. You know, they could get the ball back with 30 seconds they might and, and have move down the field. Exactly. I mean, so. Lomary tees it up. High kick. Taken from Clarion. And they'll bring it up to the 28. Kyle Evans again, the kick returner. The freshman, and that Clarion will take over. One of the things you'll have here, Clarion with 240. Now, they run a, an offense that everything's called from the sideline, and they're not, I wouldn't say fast-paced, but they're up-tempo. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we need, with three timeouts, if we can make a stop or two, we being Lock Haven, they might want to use a timeout, try to get that ball back. I'm sure Coach Randy Moore, the defense coordinator, has had time to talk to his defense about making some changes. Don't want to give anything up over the middle, which is very susceptible tonight. Player in, going to keep it on the ground. Campbell again. Haven't seen Del Reese Williams in a while. Clarion does a nice job running that offense. The running back starts outside. He's able to look inside and pick that whole sort of a, a read type play. Clarion in not much hurry. They're content to take this lead into the half. Pick up a first down by the freshman Evans. Evans, good catch, picks up the first down. Slant ball, again, right before the defender. See Simmons with the throw. One on one, make a big play. Picked up the first down, couldn't quite break it for the big play. Flamers had a tough night a little bit uh, out of Coatesville, the redshirt freshman. Taking, taking over safety spot, of course, George Christus. Over 100 tackles a year ago was the key uh, key leader on this Bald Eagles defense. Simmons keeps it, weaves his way through, just like that, nine yards. Excellent job by Simmons. Didn't look like he was moving that fast, Bob, <laughs> but he's able to find his way up the field as the clock runs down here in the second quarter to 110. I believe Lockhaven, though, gets the ball to begin the second half. Clarion had the ball to begin with. I'm surprised that Clarion is content just to do nothing with it. March methodically down the field. Of course, it could pay off. Lockhaven, all kinds of fake on the ends. I'll tell you what, I, I was watching the backside defensive end for Lockhaven. And, and you talk about good ball handling. Clarion, he did such a great mm -hmm. job with the, the backside defensive end closed all the way down before he realized Simmons came out of there. Um, exactly what job. I was watching. Excellent uh, job excellent. ball handling. Faked everybody out. Third and short now. Call it two. 48 seconds remaining in the half. To make a stop here to get the ball back. They cannot. Campbell running through. Big hole from the offensive line. Fallon the stop inside Lockhaven territory for Clarion again at the 37. And now they'll pick up the pace a little bit. I'll tell you what, Campbell does an excellent job finding. Watch it right here. He turns it up, led by his offensive line. One of the fundamentals, coach coming in, tackling. Crest. Missed miss yeah. tackle there. And Crest did an excellent job leading. Campbell up in. Simmons is going to be horse collared. I don't know if they're, I don't see a flag. Pulled down from behind. Referee didn't see it that way. Clock stops. Under 20 to play. That horse collar uh, penalty, Bob. I think the officials look for grabbing the pads mm -hmm. more than they do just the, the shirt. And that time it was pretty much all shirt. 19.5 seconds. 
Well, it's turned out to be a beautiful evening here in Clinton County. Storms have passed. The humidity's come down a little bit. Simmons looking over the middle again. And Lockhaven does a nice job. Rush is finally on. Wisely, the junior throws it out of bounds, but good pressure by the defense. Well, it was good pressure late. Simmons had time to throw it down the field. Couldn't really find anyone. Nice coverage by the secondary. 1,001, 1,002. Right there, he gets pressure. And then has, with his experience, the sense to throw the ball away with nine seconds left. Now Bernazzoli, the sophomore, Brandon, had a hand on the quarterback. And now third down. Four wideouts. Here's the rush. Oh! Dancing with the stars for Simmons, and he makes it down to Lehman. What a play by the quarterback out of Indiana. Simmons did a great job making himself small to get through the defenders, then making the throw, but I think the clock's at zero. I think so, too. There was only nine seconds left, and all that dancing Here you wasted see him. time. Watch Simmons make himself small there sideways. Makes the Please throw. Put two seconds back on the clock. Two seconds back on the clock. Timeout. Offense. Wow. Oh, big. That's a break for the Golden Eagles. Coach Tanner is going to complain. You know, going to have something to say to the referees for about that. Yeah, I, I used talking to the official about because there is an official on the field that has the official time. So Esposito does have a field goal tonight already. But it was a short one from 25 yards. He was 0 for 3 and had a block a year ago. So un unable to figure how long the lefty can make it from. Here's the kick, and it is away, and it has good distance, and it is good. So that two seconds plays dividends. At three on the scoreboard, and Clarion goes into the locker room with a 20 to seven halftime lead. When we come back, we'll talk about what we have coming up here on my TV. Aaron will have some special interviews, and we'll have stats and highlights, including this one right here. Lockhaven scores at least a touchdown in the first half. We'll need a lot more in the second. This Fox 56 sports presentation of college football on my TV WQMY is brought to you by Lock Haven University. And welcome back to Lock Haven University. The Bald Eagles trail Clarion 20 to seven at the half. You're watching live college football on my TV WQMY. I'm Aaron Dugan. We're so glad you could join us today. I have a very special guest joining me now at halftime. This is Tom Jollio, the director of athletics here at Lock Haven. And I know this is only your ninth day, but what's striking you about this university? Oh my God, what a wonderful place to be, live, go to school, wonderful education. You come here to Lock Haven, many majors, it's just an awesome place to get your education. The extracurricular activities, participation in, in athletics, it's been beautiful. Great nine days for me. I'm so excited. What are the, some of the top priorities for the athletic department? Maybe some things that you're focused on this season? Well, I think first and foremost is make sure we provide a great uh, atmosphere for the student athletes, a great environment, some, something that's safe, positive, inclusive. You know, I think uh, when I can provide an environment that allows the students to grow and develop, that's definitely my uh, my top uh, and number one thing that I need to have, have accomplished throughout the, the year. You know, there's some supplemental things that we'd like to do, raise a few money, raise a few dollars here and there, and, you know, enhance our facilities, increase our scholarships. But really, it's about providing a great experience for the student athletes. Well, the facilities are beautiful, as everyone can see watching the game tonight. And I know there's a recent addition, some new soccer fields. Yeah, absolutely. Foundation Field, just uh, brand new. We had our first home game today. We faced Lemoyne. The men, men's team battled to the end. I believe we lost one nothing. but what a great complex. Finishing up as we, uh, as we speak, you know, enhancement, bleachers, seating area, benches. It's just been wonderful. And how about your vision for the future? I know you're very new, but what do you foresee? Where do you want to see this program grow to? 
you know, it's really about, you know, being excellent in everything that we do. And, uh, you know, if I can make sure that we provide the, the best coaches, the, the most highly qualified coaches, they can share their expertise, help our student athletes be better at what they do, making sure that our student athletes graduate, and again, making sure student athletes participate and give back to the community. Those are all things that are very important to me. Well, perfect. Thanks so much for stopping to chat with us, and best of luck here at Lock Haven. Oh, thank you very much. All right, we'll have another special guest when we come right back. Stay with us. And welcome back to Lock Haven. We have two special guests with us now at halftime. This is Carly Johnson to my right, the Senior Development Officer here at Lock Haven, and Caleb Choplatsky, the Director of Athletic Development Operations and Camps. There you go. I got it all out. Go. Okay, Carly, we'll start with you. You're going to tell us about the All In Day of Giving. What is this event all about? So the All In Day of Giving is a 24-hour giving day where we're asking our alums, local supporters, and the community to rally behind LHU Athletics, make a gift, support the team of your choice, and help us raise uh, necessary scholarship support for our student athletes. That's great, and if somebody watching might want to donate to that fund, where should they go? Well, the Day of Giving will happen on October 1st, okay. beginning at 10.01 a.m., lasting for 24 hours. Okay. They can make a gift online at www.lhup.edu okay. backslash all in, or they can call our hotline number, 570-484-2. Uh, 585. Okay, we had to keep saying that over and over. 2585. So anyone can uh, log online or call us and make a gift and rally behind supporting our all-in day of giving. That's awesome. And Kaylin, what's making you want to get involved in this? Uh, we're really just trying to promote LSU athletics. Um, you see the bunch of people in the crowd right now. If they've ever came to an event or been on campus and wanted to make a difference, you know, this is their chance to be all in. Um, a lot of excitement. It's going to be an exciting 24 hours. So I, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. So You talk about being pumped. I mean, this is such a great atmosphere. How much fun do the students and the community have at these games? Absolutely. Um, I graduated from my undergrad and my master's, so I've been here for a long time, and this place is juiced. Um, it's a lot of excitement. We do a great job promoting it to our students, uh, getting the people here, giving away stuff. They're throwing out popsicles. Uh, it's a great time. It's a fun environment for the students, so that's why they come. And how about information for the All-In Day of Giving one more time? Absolutely. They, um, you can visit www lhup.edu slash all in. Uh, we got videos, pics, uh, live Twitter feed, all the stuff you need is located on there. Uh, so be on there, www.lhup.edu slash all in, October 1st. It's going to be a lot of fun. So. All right, got it. Thanks so much for the information. Absolutely, thank you. All right, make sure you stay with us here at Lock Haven University. We'll be right back with some stats and highlights from the first half. This Fox 56 sports presentation of college football on MyTV WQMY is brought to you by Lock Haven University. We are back at Hubert Jack Stadium in Lock Haven, Pennsylvania. We're at the half. Clarion leads this one 20 to 7. Back up top, looking over the Susquehanna River, over our shoulders, Bob Ide and Coach Joe DeMelfi, former Wilkes University head football coach. Enjoying a very high-paced first half, I would say, and maybe a bit surprising. Clarion coming in and putting up a couple touchdowns, two field goals, and they, they have the 13-point lead, Coach. I'll tell you what, offensive line doing a great job for Clarion, allowing Simmons time to throw. Campbell Williams able to run the football, so that 20 points that they scored big part of that goes to the offensive line we'll take a look at some of the lock haven highlights from the first half uh firstly on defense a couple good plays by the safeties but a, a big interception in the first quarter stop one of those drives and then the offense finally got going swales uh, ran the ball three times in that first half and then a uh, couple big plays here on the only drive of the game for lock haven that's Cook downfield and then Seif with the big touchdown. The Lockhaven drive was six plays, 73 yards in a minute, 45, and Cook does a nice job right there. Walton 10 for 11 overall first half, so uh, he has some efficiency. There's no doubt about it. Well, as you might expect, the stats uh, in favor of Clarion. Number of plays, Joe, really stands out, 46 to 22. That's astounding. 46 on track for 92 <laughs> plays in one ball game. What else uh, on there? 311 total yards, time of possession. Boy, it's almost three to one. And we talk about um, 46 plays, that kind of 
time of possession, defense is going to get tired very quickly. Turnovers clearing as two, and Lockhaven just one. So we talked about those keys to the game, blocking, tackling. Uh, tackling a little rough in the first half. Yeah, the, what was happening was the receivers were clearing, getting one-on-one -on -one with the defensive mm -hmm. backs. Tough to make a tackle back there. Yeah, so what adjustments do you have to make on a defensive side if you're Lockhaven? Number one, I'm going to either put pressure on Simmons or start putting very, very big pressure on the receivers. Don't let them free access off the line of scrimmage. But the offense, you know, we saw what it's capable of. We can see that. They get the ball to begin the second half. They can put a touchdown on the board. They're right back into it. And they get the ball mm -hmm. to start the second half, yeah, they but, being Lock Haven. Yeah, so we can see. You press with that offense, what you did see of it? I, I, I was. I, I think Coach Tanner's on the right track. He just has to make sure that the players, after that drive, you could see there was a little spark on the sideline. They buy into that, take it from there. Both teams are back on the field. When we come back, we'll have that second half kickoff. We'll see if Lockhaven can get back in this one quickly. This Fox 56 sports presentation of college football on my TV WQMY is brought to you by Lockhaven University. Well, the band is trying to get their fans inspired and ready for a big second half here on my TV, WQMY. Offensively, as we mentioned, Lock Haven will have the ball. I'm interested in their first defensive uh, play to uh, see if they what they do different um, as to either pressure the quarterback or pressure the receivers. Well, Caleb Walton very efficient in the first half, 10 of 11. No interceptions, 109 yards, touchdown, and just sacked one time. So that offense, once it gets in that rhythm, can get things going. It's that defense that's been on the field, you know, 20-some minutes. Uh, you know, you just can't do that in a game. I mean, that's It's that simple. Basic football. I'll tell you what, uh, Bob, we talked about the offensive line from Clarion. No sacks. Simmons, 18 for 27. Both backs are averaging, a, one is averaging a little over for four yards, the other just under four yards. So if you look at that, you would need to give credit to that Clarion offensive line. First down, 16 for Clarion, eight for Lockhaven. And penalties, four for Clarion for 39 yards, just one for Lockhaven here in the first half. So, lights are on here in Lock Haven at Hubert Jack Stadium, getting ready for the second half play between the Clarion Golden Eagles out of the west and the Lock Haven Bald Eagles out of the east. Six PAC schools in action tonight, three games, so things get underway. Pretty quickly here, school is back. Big return from Seif up to the 45. That should get things started. Kickoff return unit does their job. It gives the offense great field position. Here, let's look at it again. Takes it right from his goal line. Found that little bit of a crease. Good block. And then he's able to take it up the field right at the 45-yard line. Redshirt sophomore, transfer from Kutztown. And here we go, we're in play. Caleb Walton, the quarterback. Both swales, tailback. Walton keeps it. And he'll be taken behind. Oh, finally, fumble out. Walton's still out. Ball's still out there. Turf. And Clarion has it. Oh, my. Not the way you want to start the no, second no, half. No, no, no. Exactly. What a play by the Clarion defense. Corey McNamara brings it up. I'll tell you what, uh, excellent job. Fragel did an excellent job moving over, making the play on Swale or on Coach uh, Walton, but it was uh, Trafford, the linebacker, number three, who pulled it out, Coach. Okay, Fragel. One of the things you have, defense, Clarion's defense getting to the ball 
there are turnovers and then there are big turnovers. This could be a huge one. Simmons out, Ballin put the pressure on quickly, so there's an adjustment. Gain of just one as Simmons was gone out of bounds. You're right, uh, Bob, and talking about turnovers. That was huge for a couple of reasons. Lock Haven scored right at the end of the first half. They went back in. Now you're starting to think we're, we got it moving now. They come up with that fumble, clarion recovery. Therese Williams back in the backfield, number 20 for clarion. Here's that fumble one more time. You'll see number three come in right here. Trafford pull it out. Yes. And McNamara recovered it. Williams inside, off the fake, pick up a five. So, you know, there are a lot of big plays, big third down to begin the second half here. Williams, again, nice job picking up a little more than his average for the ball game as he finds a talk about that crease at the offensive line, third down and five for the Clarion offense. Trying to draw them offside. Little draw play. Williams, nice crease. Picks up seven when he needed five. Boy, good job by the offensive line. I'll Can't tell you what, uh, right now they're my player of the yeah. game. They're doing an excellent job. Little bit of a delay there. Williams off the left side. Picks up that first down. Keeps the clock moving. Look at it right here. Zach Morris in the middle there, along yes. with Gress, the center. And that offensive line, coach just talked about, doing excellent job up front, pushing Lockhaven back. Simmons again, now gonna go to the air, has time, has time, finally throws it over the head of his intended receiver. That's the tight end again, number 85, Garrett Sigler. So a good job by the, the offensive line, but, you know, defensive secondary. Secondary did a great job, but I'll tell you what, the offensive line did such a good job. There was nothing, but that had a potential to be a catch. It didn't. He overthrew it. It was not a catch, but that's what no pressure will do. It will allow you to find maybe some potential. Simmons over the middle again. Finding that little seam, ball comes out, but I think he was down. Nope. They're gonna say incomplete pass. He's he's saying that the official was saying there was never a um, reception made. Eric Fry was the guy over the middle. Ball was bobbled, so we're looking at a third down. Here, let's see that again on replay. Bobble. That's close. Couldn't, you know, it doesn't look Coming like out. he has possession. Yeah. Yep. That time, Fallon came up the field from the linebacker position, offensive line, excellent job on the pickup. Third down efficiency, six of 12, Clarion is tonight on third down, six of 10, excuse me. And this time, Lockhaven might get them off the field. Fourth down on the way. Excellent job, good coverage. Williams out on the flare man. Williams for Lockhaven. Not a lot of pressure, just enough to bother Simmons. He overthrows the receiver. So Scott Ayers might, looks like, nope, they're gonna go for it. Now watch for a quick kick here. Clarion gonna go for it. One for one tonight on fourth downs already. Watch for the quick kick though. Not the type of formation they'd go it for is. and he, he uh, shanks it. Big time shank. Takes a clarion roll, but Lockhaven should get good field position right at the 23. So, a fumble by Lockhaven. The defense holds, and now the offense can get back on the board. Opportunity here. The offense had the ball fumbled a little way. Defense came out, did a nice job. Looks like Coach Ro uh, Roberts talked about sending some linebackers, which he's done here early in the second half. Let's see what the offense has in store. Randy Moore, the defensive coordinator, second season. So Walton back on. Bleak Harris now, sidecar to him. 
Three wideouts and a tight end. Seif on the reverse. Almost got clear. He needed it to pick up a block on the outside. He couldn't by Cornelius. And That's that zoom game. type play. They got it to outside. Good speed. He's able to turn up the field. Receiver, excellent job out there on the block. And pick up big yardage. Edmonds on the tackle. Walton, good play by the Clarion defense. Finding, finding a receiver over the middle is Seif again. And we have a flag down, I think ineligible downfield. I think they saw the yes, call. Yes, they did. Here, we'll take it a little bit again, yeah, but. Down field, number 71 offense. Nah, I, I, yeah. You know what, if you're engaged, I always had a problem with that, Bob. If you're engaged in an offensive line and the guy starts yeah. to move and you're moving with them, I, I have a problem with the call. But officials saw it as the uh, offensive lineman down the field. The call was made. We'll go back to second down in about 10. <laughs> Just a second penalty of the game for the Bald Eagles. So Caleb Walton in the shotgun. All the way. Finds Harris out of the backfield. Third along on the way for Lockhaven. One of the things you want from your running back is to turn it away. But Clarion defensively does a nice job. Excellent Look. job. Didn't allow him to do that. Trafford, who uh, caused the fumble the last time out. So a big third down now. Wallen double pumped and then couldn't find Seif over the middle. Seif took one to the head. He remains on the turf. A little bit of pressure on Walton. He uh, couldn't follow through on the throw. Ball was short. And. Well, see, bounces right back up. Good news for Lockhaven. Here you're going to watch. I think we have a flag down or. There you I see. I don't see it. Walton couldn't take the step, Bob. So the punt team comes on. That means we'll see Stamball. Fourth punt of the night, averaging 31 yards for the lefty. Pressure put on again, nice kick. Fair catch taken by Clarion. So a couple turnovers from Lockhaven, and the, the Bald Eagle defense is forced to turn over in all but one game last season. Come up with a big one tonight. Lockhaven does have some history. Uh, they've won four PSAC championships in school history. But not since 1979 has that happened. In the preseason, Paul Lockhaven was sixth in the East. That was the pick. For them, Bloomsburg was the top of the East, along with Kutztown and Shippensburg and Westchester. So big play on defense from the defense of Lockhaven. Big number 91, Andres Munoz, the freshman. He, he had a lot of help to getting that defense to it for Lockhaven, doing a good job. Williams does an excellent job of moving to the ball, wrapping the ball carrier up. So we're looking at a second and nine for Clarion. A Ballin in there broke it up again. Number four, senior out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Simmons quickly out to the flat and finds a receiver. Genovero. So third down on the way, and this gives us a chance now to head down to Aaron, who has a group of special guests. Aaron, what's going on down there? Bob, I'm making some friends down here. Joining me now is Brittany Smith. Tell me about your experiences as a student here at Lockhaven. Being a student here at Lockhaven is a, such a growing experience. It helps you grow as an individual, as a student. You build family and friends. Um, you have lots of fun, as in tonight, tonight is a wideout game. Go Eagles. And um, we just have 
fun all the time around campus. Well, speaking of fun, I know you're in a group. Tell me the name of the group and what you guys are all about. All right, well, the name of our group is Diamonds in a Rough, and I'm the president. And um, we are a multicultural group that exercises and dances of all types of sorts, meaning reggae, um, soca, ballet, modern, hip-hop. You name it, we can do it. And where do you perform? We perform on stage at football games, the, um, the parade downtown. We do pep rallies. We do... Everything, we also support a lot of people, as in like the softball team, track team, and we help support them and do, perform at their shows as well. That's great. Well, Brittany, they're all here. Yes. So, uh, you know My I'm going to ask right you guys right. to dance, right? Yes. All right, let's see what you got. Go ahead. All right. Good job, ladies. Uh, Joe was doing a little dance himself, but I don't know if that had anything My to do with My back didn't hurt Bob so no? much I would. <laughs> I know you're dancing around. Yeah. Hey, offensive, uh, defensive interference there while we were uh, with Aaron. You saw it in the box and box that we have. And Clarion's inside the 39 now, second down, and on the move one more time. Just when the defense gets things going, they come out, you know, another big penalty for them. We talked about uh, Coach Moore and making some adjustments at the half. He has done that. Defensively, they're doing a better job, I believe, here in the second half. This time. That time again, Williams. Mm -hmm. Inside, didn't look like he was wide enough. Right here you see the throw. Yep. Williams off and a little bit inside enables the receiver to turn up the field for good yardage. And for another first down, Genovero, you know, just sat right there. Even if you're playing a zone, yeah. Bob, you have to find the receiver. Mm -hmm. No matter if it's a zone, man-to-man, -man, whatever, you have to find a receiver in your area. Hand off in the middle, this time good job up front from Lockhaven. Ninety six was in there. EJ Uma, freshman from Delaware, defensive end. He you like to see Uma time. freshman, he liked to see a freshman making plays. He did a nice job closing from that outside position. So again, clearing on the move. Simmons with the fake inside. Goes to the wide side and making the catch is Genovero again. I'll tell you what, he's doing an uh, excellent job for Clarion on the catch. But I'll tell you who makes the play. Watch Simmons outside the freshman who makes a mistake by not containing the quarterback. Simmons makes a big play. So Clarion started this drive on the 36 with 10.50 on the clock. Right now we're under, coming up on the seven minute mark. So again, taking time off the clock, able to run and pass, mix it up a little bit. Over the middle again, incomplete. That time the safety did get in there, Eubanks, the junior. Tried to hit the tight end after a quick fake inside. Didn't happen. Down to seven minutes in the third quarter. Clarion really working on ball control here. Used a lot of the clock mm -hmm. here in the third quarter. Well, throughout the whole game, in fact, saw that stat at halftime. Held the ball for almost 22 minutes. Again, they're content to bring it under 10 on the play clock. Trying to adjust the play. Can they get it off? They do with one. Here comes the blitz. Ginevero over the middle, makes a guy miss. Has room to run. Touchdown, Clarion. I'll tell you what they did at the last minute, and it's enough to confuse the defense. They changed the offensive set. Ginevero stepped off the line, 
wide receivers stepped on the line, and all of a sudden, defensively, it gives you a little bit of a different look. They hit Gennaro across the middle, takes it to the end zone, touchdown. That, that slot receiver all night long has been open, and that's an adjustment you're going to have to make watching film this week. I think one of the things I, I talk about is playing that zone defense. You have spots that are open in it. Simmons doing an excellent job getting the ball to the right receivers, and they're able to run after. So the extra point is good. Clarion extends their lead now to 20, 6.51 left in the third quarter. Another big drive for the Golden Eagles, capped by a touchdown pass. 27-7, Clarion over Lockhaven. Based on the banks of the Susquehanna River, West Branch in Clinton County, Lockhaven University. Established in 1870. Joe would have liked to take one of those boats out today, get on the river, get in the, it was hot enough where you could just take a dip in there. Beautiful, I'm not even sure you could be cooled beautiful, off. But beautiful day for it, yes it was. Although some, it's turned out to be a fairly cool yeah, night. Some storms did pass through, but on each side of the mountain, no rain per se here at Hubert Jack Stadium. So that was a big plus. We got this game underway. And boy, Lockhaven would have liked a better start to the Dave Kaner era. And his, they're down by 20, 651 in the third quarter. Well, you know what? One game does not a career make. Nope. And, and um, I think there's, they've done some good things on both sides of the ball. They just have to keep the faith. Make some big plays. And get some offense going because they've shown signs of a, a definitely a good, very good offense. That one drive, that it's, definitely they showed some signs. But remember, they're just learning it. They just learned it four weeks ago. They had four weeks of it. Exactly yeah. right. Okay, so the offense comes back on after the Clarion drive was eight plays, 64 yards, 359 off the clock. Caleb Walton remains under center. Should see him the rest of the way. Quarterback keep. Straight through. Pick up about four. Brandon Short the Short, stop. excellent job getting his hands on the quarterback. They faked that zoom play outside. Then Walton tried to take it up inside, but Short did a great job of grabbing on and holding on. Swales finally picks up. Well, ball on the turf. I think it's a fumble. I don't think he was down. I think the ball was out. Let's see what the officials think. Clarion with a big turnover. Kwame Bell, the senior out of Philadelphia, picks up the loose ball. Here again, both Swales. Through. Oh, fall. what a play. Got the helmet right in on the ball. I tell you what, we talk about tackling the football. That was an excellent job of putting your hat on the football, causing the fumble. Looked like Asamoah, number 33, was in there. Hard to tell. But another turnover for Lockhaven. That's two now in the second half. Already one led to a touchdown for the Golden Eagles. Three fumbles tonight, and that turnover differential is in favor of Clarion. And that was one of our keys to the game. The other was first downs, and if you don't have the ball, you can't get first downs. Exactly <laughs> right. Your offense has to be, if, and Coach Tainter talked about 22 to 26 first downs. Your offense has to have the football. They have to develop some consistency cannot turn it over and we talked about that pregame in fact every week we mentioned turnovers Bobby obviously yeah. the team that turns it over the most is going to have a tough time winning a ball game a bill battle to each each time Campbell freshman in there better tackling that time was from number six Daniel Strawbridge the junior so third and long now on the way for Clarion 
you know, as a, as a coach now, you, you want to look at film that you're down by 20 points. But you also want to get a sense of, of who's not giving up, who's going after the ball, who's making the tackle. Um, that helps you determine where you're going with your program also. Here comes the blitz. One on one on the outside, and they can't get him. So that's Mark Nicholas again making that first guy miss. It's the yards after catch, the yak, the yak yards. You know, they're hurting Lockhaven. That's what the offense is predicated upon is making the first guy miss so you can get up the field for some yardage. Play gained a couple, but it's fourth and about six for Clarion. Last time was a quick kick. Let's see what they want to do this time. Well, I, I, when you look at the formation, it pretty much gives you an idea. Now they have a two wide outs to the right side, wide out to the left side, so it looks like they may go for it. They do. They go to the outside, and good defense out there. Tyre Anderson unable, uh, was able to stop the move of the outside receiver, and here comes... Caleb Walton and company back on quickly. Also a receiver mistake. He ran to the defensive back. He needs to either make the turn before the back. He has to read that defensive back. Just one first down so far in the third quarter for Lockhaven. Walton with time gets it out to Harris. Quickly, though, Clarion is there. Five-yard gain. You know, defensively, uh, this type of offense, you say to yourself, we can hold them to two to three, four yards at the most. We've done a pretty good job because the Lockhaven's offense is also predicated on get the ball outside, let him, somebody miss, pick up big yardage. So we have a second and about seven here. Lockhaven has to get the ball down field more. Harris with a little bit of a hole, takes advantage, and they'll pick up a first down. First one of the third quarter, and up near the 47. I'll tell you what, Walton did an excellent job on ball handling there also. Excellent job, the ball was lost for just a second. Good job in the truck getting those replays in. Walton rushed, but gets it out, and he has a guy. Cook makes a move and picks up good yardage. I'll tell you what, Walton made a, a great throw based upon Short hitting him right, right there, knocked him backwards as he was making the throw. So Caleb Walton shows a little spunk there, hangs in there. So now let's get the rhythm back, a little momentum now. Inside, that was a tough one to catch. Yeah, they had two defenders right yes. there. Seif unable to pull it in. He's lucky he wasn't intercepted. Now, is that a play by Walton who's pulling the ball out and making the play, or is that a design fake to the running back? I think it's a uh, read type situation. Reed. If he sees there's a gap there, he's given the ball. That time he does give the ball. Harris has running room. Harris inside the 25, and up, excuse me, 35 to about the 31 yard line. I'll tell you what, when Coach Tainer looks at the film, he's going to like that. I had a tough time finding the ball myself up here. Right, excellent job. 15 yard gain, biggest run of the night so far for Lockhaven. This time a little pitch to Harris, and boy, he makes a nice move to come back into the inside to make positive yardage. Excellent move. Walton got rid of that ball a little too quickly. So Harris showing a little bit of speed. Now they'll get into that fast-paced offense. Over the middle. Got to hold on to the ball. Cook does. It's up to about the 20. First down, move the chain. So now something going. Receiver did a good job looking at the marker. Was able to take it down. Walton made that throw over a defender. Get a touchdown here. Yeah. Didn't think he gets something going. He's gonna go to the end zone, he's got a guy! 
They give it to him. Yes, touchdown, Clarion. 21 yards. And that's going to go to Sean Seif, the redshirt sophomore. I'll tell you what Seif did. did a great, he ran a great route. Good blocking by that Lock Haven offense. Walnut, excellent throw. It all came together. Puts up a touchdown. Hit a little. Oh, yeah, a little smile <laughs> a little on smile. the sideline now. Yep. Got, we got things moving in the right direction. They're feeling pretty good, although they're down uh, by 13. 14 now. That extra point was no, no. Oh, was good. That looked like it was off to the right. You're but, right, Bob. I'm sorry. Well, they gave it to him. There you see it again. See what a nice move over the middle. Walton found him. And again, good blocking up front. Down by 13. Well, you got to get the ball back. I don't, I don't want to say onside kick, but they were practicing that I, at the practice I was at. So it, it wouldn't surprise me because trying to build confidence, let's take a chance. Players are, yes, let's take a chance. But from a point of view where you think you can score quickly, it wouldn't make sense here. Go ahead and let your defense get on the field and play. Try to get a three and out. So Lockhaven, a nice drive. Eight plays, 64 yards, 228 off the clock. Cut the lead now to 14 as the extra point was no good. Wide to the right. So now Bumeri will kick, kick it away. Now your special teams has to play good and you know the defense step it up a little bit. That gets the crowd back into it. Let's see if it helps the Lock Haven defense. Pick it straight down, they will. Evans pulls it in, flag comes in. Usually uh, a hold is called or a block in the back on the returning team. Let's take a look at this. Eric Lewis, a referee tonight, going to get the call. During the return, back in the back, 95 on the return team. You know, penalty, first down. So that will back up Clarion and they'll give him a long field. Good, good opportunity for the mm -hmm. defense here to make a difference. One of the things you do as a a defensive coach, whether you're a position coach or the coordinator, let's start going after that ball. Yep. Let's let's yep. cause some turnovers. It, yep. Give it, us a chance to get back in this ball game. Pull that ball out. It's going to be placed at the 10 yard line. Worst starting field position for the Golden Eagles tonight. Simmons, though, very efficient tonight. 24 of 38, 287 through the air. Has not been sacked. He comes out, they're gonna throw it downfield, lays it up. A oh, great job by the receiver, Genovero. I'll tell you what, wow. he, he's made some great moves yep. tonight. The ball was in the air. The defensive back's momentum carried him down the field. Gennaro turned inside, made the adjustment to the ball. That's the sign of a very good receiver. Right here you see it, defensive back. Number one, had his back to the ball, which is a huge mistake for a defensive back. Lost sight of the ball. Gennaro did an excellent job Yeah, the redshirt freshman Flamer. Been in some plays tonight, but also has made some mistakes. But, you know, first start. Simmons out. Trying to get a block to Evans. He does and picks up, you know, good yards right at midfield. And the block, guess who was there? That... Genevero. Genevero, excuse me. So now Clarion in no hurry, going to try to run this clock down. Last play of the third quarter. So the junior wide receiver out of St. Mary's High School, Elk County. Excuse me, St. Mary's Town in Elk County High School. 
Last play of the half now for the Golden Eagles. Over the middle, they have a guy. Evans wide open. Still on his horse inside the 20, knocked down at the 17-yard line. One of the things we're going to work on next week is formation recognition if you're Lock Haven. Formation, offensive formation recognition. That way you won't lose a receiver. 32 yards on that pass and catch. Directly off the line of scrimmage. No contact. And on that play, that will put the third quarter in the books. One quarter on the way for Lockhaven to get back into it, but their defense has to come up big. And we come back on the other side. Walton to Cook and Seafin, too, with a touchdown. Is it enough for Lockhaven? We'll find out. This Fox 56 Sports presentation of college football on my TV WQMY is brought to you by Lock Haven University. White out here at Hubert Jacks Stadium, heading into the fourth quarter. And Lock Haven trails this one by 14 to the Golden Eagles. Bye bye, Joe DeMelfi back, clearing. Going for the touchdown, 17 yards, no flags. Simmons again, and he hits Mark Matt Lehman, the junior out of Burrell, who we talked about in the first quarter, and that looked very easy, coach. It was much too easy if you're the, the defensive coaches at Lock Haven. Simmons had a lot of time. Receiver ran the route. Again, I, tough to keep up with the receiver. Got the defender got turned around. Simmons made a good throw. Touchdown for Clarion. They go up by 20. Well, that talk about efficient. Four plays, 90 yards, 140 off the clock. Kick is up and it is through. We'll take another quick time out here. My TV, WQMY, has all your live local sports. It's been all clearing here in Lock Haven tonight. Well, the band is going to continue to try and motivate the Lock Haven fans, but their team trails now 34 to 13. Joe, your defense cannot be on the field 31 minutes and 47 seconds without something bad happening, and that's really cost Lock Haven. There's no doubt about it, and and especially the the way that uh, Clarion is doing such a great job up front. Uh, can't get a lot of pressure on Simmons. He's making some excellent throws. His receivers are doing a great job. He's spreading the ball around. Just a tough situation um, for the Lock Haven defense. Although I, I, I said earlier, you have to recognize the offensive set to know what responsibilities you're going to have on defense. You cannot lose receivers no matter a zone defense or a man-to-man. -man. You can't lose the guy off the line of scrimmage. So Esposito again teased it up. Past two field goals tonight, and this one will come down and be taken at the three. And this year they try to reverse again. This is Seif. The flag comes down, and this one's coming back. Just when things go right, they go wrong. Sean Seif with a nice game. Put a flag down at the 16-yard line. You see that a lot, especially when a back breaks one. There's, there's a, a flag on the field. You know somebody made the block in the back or held, and that's exactly what happened there. You see the fake, and right there was the block in the back. Tough to, to avoid it. Well, Clarion was backed up after the kickoff, and they drove it 90 yards. Now, let's see. Lockhaven's going to have to do the same thing because this ball is going to be placed inside the 10 at the 9. 
I think no matter what type of offense run, you have to take care of the football. That means it can't be on the ground, whether it be a fumble, uh, incompleted pass. Yeah, I remember this half started with a Bo Swales fumble in the second half. And that just summed up what was going on for the Bald Eagles. Now, Cook with a nice catch from Walton gets him out a little bit. Good catch. It's right inside the defender. Walton makes a quick throw, and Cook makes a nice grab. Walton keeps, dives forward, first down up past the 20. Hurry up offense now. There you see the plays coming in from the sidelines. That's what you want to do, move the chains. Two downs, short pass, Walton on the run, and they move it. Out to Jeremy Cornelius. From Harrisburg, senior. You know, pretty soon they're going to fake that out and go up, don't you think? I mean, yeah, I would think at some point that's in the um, that's in the playbook. They haven't really thrown much downfield, if I recall tonight. Very, very seldom tried to stretch vertically and good. Harris spin up past the 40 to the 42. So. I Excellent job there with ball handling. Offensive line. Walton again, a pass midfield. Showing a little uh, spark on offense, mm -hmm. moving the ball, which is what you want to see at this point. You're down by 21. Timeout going to be called. Clarion calls timeout. Want to give the defense a little bit of a break. So first game of the 2015 season for both teams. Both teams have something to work on. And now let's see what Lockhaven has on store for this season. Again, out to Seton Hill, then IUP, two tough ones back-to-back. Boy, then a killer schedule. ESU, Westchester, Shippensburg. They do get two of those at home. That's Murderer's Row. We'll be here against Cheney and Millersville, and then the end this season, Kutztown, Bloomsburg, and against California. So that's not easy every week in the PSAC. No, it is not. It does not get easy every week. It's a very good conference. Um, one of the things you're looking for now, if you're Coach Tainer, is... Okay, we're going to turn this program around. And, and by that, or, or we're, even better, we're going to build on what Coach Allen started. But I want to know who's going to be with me. Now is when you start yep. looking for people that are giving their all. They're down 21, fourth quarter. Easy to sort of give it up. Here, Walton going to try downfield. Flag down as he was trying to hit Cornelius down there, and he got mixed up with the defensive back, and it's going to be a That's the kind big of call. pass interference the defensive back says, who, me? Uh, yeah. You know, I'm going after the ball, but uh, pass interference. it was a good call. 15-yard penalty automatic first down. That was Asamoah, the senior. So 15 yards on that. In college rules, it's 15 yard penalty. It's not where the penalty happened. Right. So four wide outs in there. Harris is in the backfield. Walton will fake it to him and picked off. In and out of the hands of Cook and right into the hands of Chris Liberto, I tell you the what, senior. 
Yeah, excellent jo defensive job by Clarion. Caused the fumble or the interception. Right here, you're going to see it. Right here is the throw. That is going after the ball right there. Receiver tried to keep it alive, which caused the fumble. Gordon. McNamara, excellent job. Both On three year starters, and we talked about that in the when we showed the starting lineups hours ago. Corey McNamara and Chris Libero, three year starters, both teamed up for that interception. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. And we'll go right back to our pregame discussion and our discussion with Coach Tanner yesterday. You can't have them. It's as simple as that. Tough when you turn it over. Tough to win the ball game. Four turnovers overall for Lockhaven, one just for Clarion. And how many of those four turnovers resulted in, in points? That's what you have to look at. So Clarion in no hurry now, gonna just run that clock off. Up by three scores. Impressed with Clarion offensively. They've done a very nice job moving the ball. They're using all of the play clock. They'll hand it inside to Campbell. He is stood up on the defensive side by number 10 right here, Miles Eubanks, the junior out of Coatesville. And now Aaron has some special guests down there. They're still coming at you, Aaron. That's right, Bob. I'm ready for him. These are our last two guests of the night here from Lock Haven. This is Ashley Kozer to my left, the Director of Alumni Relations. And this is Nicole Rawl Miller, which, who, a Lock Haven alum and a current employee here. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining me, girls. Thank you. Ashley, we'll start with you. Tell us about some of the programs that the Alumni Association is working on. Um, well, we have many programs that we're working on right now. Um, currently, we are trying to recruit a lot of alumni to help out with regional alumni events. Um, we're anywhere from, um, in two weeks from now, we'll be in State College for an alumni happy hour. Um, we go down to Florida in February, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia. So we're kind of all over the place. So there's a lot of different things that are happening to get alumni involved, get them back on campus, um, and just really come back to the university and come to events like this. Absolutely, and I heard something about Locktoberfest. Tell us what that's all about. That's right. So Locktoberfest 2015, that's our homecoming theme for this year. Homecoming will take place October 12th through 17th. Most of the alumni events will happen on the 16th and 17th, which is that Friday and Saturday. We'll have an alumni golf tournament. We'll have a pep rally down at the river. There'll be fireworks this year, which everyone's really excited mm -hmm. about. And then on Saturday, we're going to have some events here on campus for alumni. So we'll, we will have a uh, fifth quarter cookout event that we're going to have, as well as a pregame party. So lots of things happening for home. Definitely. I don't know how you keep track of it all. I know. It's a lot. <laughs> and Nicole, being on the alumni board, you see a lot of people come back, come back to the school they love so much. Talk about just, you know, how much fun you guys have coming back here. Oh, uh, we do. We have so much fun. Like at events like this, they're, they're so much fun, either home or away, but especially home here at the Haven. So much has changed, but it's still the same atmosphere. It's the same nice people we talked about. Mm -hmm. And I just encourage everybody to come back as often as they can to get involved, to volunteer for the yeah. alumni board. We need lots of great members, mm -hmm. and we do good things for the university and all of our students. So we encourage you to come back every time you can. So if alumni do want to come back, how should they go about that? They could go to our um, alumni tab on the LHU website, and they can also connect with us on social media. Ashley's really good about updating that and keeping all of us informed about what's going on. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for the information, ladies. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Let's go back up to you, Bob. Alumni all over the place here for Lock Haven University. And if you want to get involved, make sure you go to the website, and uh, hopefully we'll see all that alumni back here in October in the, when the leaves are changing and the temperature's a little bit smaller. So Lock Haven gets the ball back. Harris upfield. I'll tell you what, Harris impresses me. He runs hard. Seems like he's really uh, into the game. He's the kind of person that you want on your side when you're trying to, to build on a program. Uh, did an excellent job turning up the field there, although we have a flag on the ground. Turnovers, Holding down. Penalties really yep. have hurt. Lock Haven tonight. Little Coach Tainer. 
will take the film, I'm sure digest it. They don't play for another eh, 10 days or so. It's a lot of time to work over the holiday weekend and figure things out. Again, we talk about the adjustment, how they would react to a new coach. Uh, and I think that from what I could see, they're playing very hard. I mean, they're making some mistakes. Good throw, excellent catch. Great job to the tight end. Delvon Dennis, sophomore, pulls it in and a big gainer all the way down to the 40 yard line. I think Coach Tanner's gonna look at the film and find some good things. Excellent job on the fake, good throw. Nine minutes left in this contest. Lockhaven's not gonna give up at home. Walton again. Oh, in and out of the hands of the receiver. Tried to hit the tight end again. And Dennis almost had it picked off by Liberto. Yeah, you have to be ready. For, that's a short pass off that type of offense. You have to be ready for it and almost catch that in your body rather than use your hands because the ball's moving a little bit. Tried to make that catch with his hands. Harris to the outside, picks up a block and has some running room down the sideline to the 43 of Clarion. Again, will keep rolling. Harris with a nice run to the corner. 17 on that for Harris. He's been a positive here tonight. Walton well, the fake, two receivers there, so. Yanked in by the number 80, Jeff Dincher out of Jersey Shore, the redshirt sophomore. Don't think they want, uh, offensively, they wanted two receivers on top of each other, but they got it done. They made the throw, and it was a good catch and picked up some yardage. Harris tonight, seven carries, 63 yards. So nice job by him, trying to set up over the middle. They do go downfield. Just, Just short pressure at the end mm -hmm. for Walton not to be able to step and make that throw. There was a little pressure up the field. The offensive line for Lockhead did a great job initially. Somebody got loose from the block, and I couldn't tell who that was. One of the down men. Coach Tanner taking some time now. I'm not sure. I know he doesn't like this. He wants to get right into it very quickly, but still working on that offense. Flag down, illegal motion. Ball start, 89 offense. Five yard penalty, third down. Nothing kills momentum than a Another thing illegal motion right. penalty. Exactly, what you don't like in that offense yeah. is anything that stops, stops your offense from, and he talked about it yesterday when he talked about efficiency. We want to run our offense with efficiency. And that's not one of the things that leads to efficiency. Well, Lockhaven has rushed for 124 tonight. Well, Walton is gonna have to carry his team. Gets out of one block, holds on to the ball, and finally he's knocked down. They're wrapped up at the 36 yard line, third down on the way for the Ball Eagles. We talked about stretching the field vertically. Finally wanted to look downfield to do something. Didn't feel like he had anyone open, so he picked up a couple yards, but they're facing a fourth down here. Gonna change the play from the sidelines. Coach Tainer does call the plays as head coach. Coming up on the seven minute mark. Some confusion in the backfield. Here comes the big rush. Juan squares his shoulders, but unable to get any juice on that one, throwing no. it downfield. Yeah, he tried to get outside, and he did get outside, but as you mentioned. That turns the ball over on downs. Coach Tanner will talk to his quarterback. He works with his quarter, the quarterbacks constantly in practice. Well, I think I th what, you, what you say to it, I mean, Walton, you just say, listen, this is what you need to do on that play. Maybe he could have turned it up and 
tried to run it, picked up the first. Didn't do that. So you correct whatever mistake, correct whatever you want to do there if you're Coach Tainer, and move on as Clarion. So now Clarion again in no hurry to do much of anything except run clock off. And they would like to start this season 1-0. Big play by Ballin. Yeah, Ballin, I'll tell you what, did a nice job getting over. Quarterback was trying to make up his mind there where he wanted to do, what he, whether he wanted to run it or make the throw. Nolan did an excellent job getting over and making the tackle. Campbell, the freshman, flag comes in. Yeah, looks like an offensive holding. Umpire so making stops. that call, Bob. Personal foul, hands to the face, 91 defense. Uh -oh. 15 oh, wow. yards, automatic first down. Interesting call. Don't you, you know, typically you don't see that right there. No, normally you see it with the wide receiver yeah. or running back might maybe, but not the. Uh, not in the interior line. That's the redshirt freshman Munoz called for that, but I don't think you worry about that one so much. So Clarion looks like they're going to pick up their 46 seventh win over the Lock Haven team. Moved to 1 0 on the season. Simmons will keep it. And Rip down quickly. Eubanks on the stop, the junior again, number 10. Again, you have the safety coming up quick to make that tackle. As you mentioned, Bob, no hurry by. Nope. Gonna take their time. Run that play clock down and go from there. Inside handoff again. Defense doing a nice job for Lock Haven, swarming better. to the ball. Got four, five, six people in on tackle, which is what you want. Personal foul, number 93, defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, now this is what Coach is going to, you know, he's going to take notes on these, you know. I, I, this is where, you know, we've got a learning situation going on. Uh, some things you can't do. Uh, obviously, you're frustrated, you're down, but not only causing a problem for yourself, you're causing a problem for our football team. So... I think that's the discussion Coach Tanner is having. Okay, clear. Ball down now. I admire your spunk. I admire yeah. the way you're going about it, but I'm not crazy about what you did to get there. This is Campbell, the freshman. Stopped by Anderson on that. I'll tell you what, the running backs from Clarion have really run hard tonight. They have done an excellent job. Uh, we talked Williams. about them, right? Yeah. And, and the other thing is, and we, and we talked about the, the you know, player of the game. I mean, Simmons has done exceptionally oh, yeah. well. Running backs have done well, but those five guys up front have really set the tone for Clarion. Absolutely. I mean, Simmons is 28 of 42. He has an efficiency rating of 160. <laughs> 377 yards, three TDs, career night for 
Play the quarterback. Game. Number 10 offense. Five yard penalty, second down. Penalty against uh, Claren as uh, we wind down mm -hmm. to the 3.30 mark in the fourth quarter. Campbell with 44 yards rushing, Williams with 43. So, you know, nothing great, but just, uh, just honest enough to keep the defense back. Exactly right. And the other thing is Claren coming off a two-win season last year. It's a big win for them to open their season. Yeah, first win in two years. They started off 4-0 two years ago, believe it or not, Clarion did. So this will be a big win for Clarion as they take on Millersville next week. Next Thursday, in fact, at home against, you know, Millersville, as I said. So, you know, they could end up going 2-0. Then they have Cheney and Gannon. So very good chance Clarion could start out undefeated in 2015. We talked about uh, Clarion at this point, just running that play clock down. Base with a third down, and they're going downfield. Downfield, and it is caught. Yes, touchdown. Number 80, Jerron Moyer, the junior, I'll tell you what, calls Moore, in the 29-yard touchdown. Moyer did a great job getting inside the defensive back. I think when you look at these, the film, if you're Lock Haven, you're going to talk about playing position-wise, recognition, and here you see it. Inside, no depth from the safety. Again, if it's a zone, you got to recognize someone in that zone. So Clarion puts another six on the board. And this one is blocked, pulled down, and it will go for a missed extra point. Clarion in 2013, I was mistaken, went 3-0 and to start. They beat Kutztown, Lockhaven, and Mercyhurst. That was in 2013. Last year, they lost the opener. They won two in a row, but then ended up finishing 2-9 and nine overall. So the Golden Eagles with a big opportunity. We talked about the schedule. Seems like they have some their easy games early on. Then right in the middle there, Seton, Cal, IUP, Slippery Rock, Inwood, Kutztown. Mercyhurst, a very tough team, and Gannon as well. So, Yeah, I think uh, when, when you look at the conference overall, and, and you say to yourself, and we have uh, East Stroudsburg in our area as well as Bloomsburg, Millersville down West the Chester. road. I mean, there's, West there's some good, good teams. Yeah. Westchester's. Yeah, the West, though, you know, still very, very good for the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. One of the more uh, highly decorated conferences and well established conferences in America, Division II football, well known too. I mean, you come out of this league, you're well tested. Very well tested. That's playoffs. right. If you can get to the playoffs, you're, you're, you know your team has been tested. That's a very good point, Bob. So another kickoff for Esposito. This one deep into the end zone, and wisely, Seif will take the touchback, bring out, bring back Walton back on the field. You know we want to end on a positive here. Lockhaven's going to try. Well, you know what? It's 2:22. You're working on setting up, uh, uh, up an offense. You're working on installing it. You can't afford not to put this group in and let them have some reps and game situations to see what they can do. And he's not playing any of the backups. This is a starting offensive team that came on the field hours ago. Out to Cook on a little swing. That play is designed to pick up a couple. That time it did. Got it out, uh, out of bounds. Stopped the clock. So two positives on that play, on that type of offense. Going to run 
Swales, he's got running room, picks up a block. Bo Swales down the sidelines, inside Cleary and Torrey, and Torrey at the 30-yard line. Swear, excellent job by the offensive line. Swales does a nice job getting it down the field. That's a positive. 36 yards, longest play of the night there on the ground. It. That defensive end came to the quarterback. Walton did an excellent job giving it off. Here's Harris. I like Harris. Ball still down. Inbounds. Clarion has it at the two. Wow. I thought he lost possession of that. I don't have a very good angle. I thought he lost possession out of bounds. But I don't have it. Uh, like I said, my angle here is not as uh, good. I think... Can't fault the way Harris ran. I'll be honest with you. Um, gave up possession. Somebody got a hand in there. Someone got a hand, but then a defender kept it inbounds. <laughs> so, so another turnover for Lockhaven. Again, they moved the ball decently. Just they turned it over which makes their fifth, I think, maybe even six. Yep, four fumbles tonight. One interception, five turnovers on the evening. For Lockhaven. So the Dave Tainer era here at Lockhaven doesn't quite begin as he would have liked. Well, I, I'll but be honest with you, on. I think there's some good things to yep. build on, Bob. And when we come back here in October to That's see right. him, I, I, I'm anxious to see what he, it looks yep. like at that point. Absolutely. As you take a look at uh, Coach Tainer. Absolutely. This will be a different team in October. No doubt in my mind. Campbell going to run it out. And we'll take this one in under a minute. We, I think we've digested this one enough and well known what happened here tonight. But again, you said it. A lot to build on. Have some momentum. It's the beginning of a season. No no use, no use, reason to get down. Just make some changes. One, Like you said, one game does not make a season. Now, I think if you're here for four weeks, which basically is what Coach Tanner has yep. been here uh, with, that, uh, with that offense, you have to talk to your players, talk about the long run, yep. and that, that, that may not mean just this season. I'm talking about the long run. So well, there was uh, some inexperience up front on defense. Two new safeties. We knew the cornerbacks were good. Couple The linebackers had some experience. There he is talking mm -hmm. to Walton. He's talking to his offensive players, and you know why? He's yep. talking, he's, he's coaching at this point, which is uh, what you would expect. So it turned out to be a beautiful evening here, Clinton County, Lockhaven, Pennsylvania, and this is just some of our schedule on the way. This weekend, we'll have college football over, all over the place, Wofford and Clemson, Wagner and Rice, and then on the 12th, more PSAC action from the American Sports Network as they'll go out to Slippery Rock to watch East Stroudsburg University, and you can watch that right here on WQMY at 7 o'clock. And our high school football season gets started next week as we'll head back out to Central Pennsylvania in a very good double-A matchup in District 4. Montoursville is at Lewisburg, and then we'll be back up in the Lackawanna County Football Conference to see Lakeland and Valley View for that Upper Valley robbery. And then if you want to see our schedule, go to myfoxnepa.com. We have a full 11, 12, 14 weeks of football for you, and we do expect some teams to make a playoff run. So that will do it. This one's in the book. Clarion moves to 1-0. Lockhaven will drop their opener, go to 0-1, and, and they'll head to Seton Hill next week to try to get that win back. When we come back, we'll try to co talk to Coach Tainer and see what he has to say about tonight's performance from his team. You've been watching live, local, college football on my TV, WQMY.
This Fox 56 Sports presentation of college football on my TV WQMY is brought to you by Lock Haven University. Well, we know the crowd isn't leaving happy, but a lot to build on here in Lock Haven. They lose their opener to Clarion 40 to 13, the final. Bob I, Joe DeMelfi, top side, and we kept talking about the positives. There's something to build on. Clarion looks pretty good out west, and Lock Haven, they're going to get right back into it. Yeah, I think they've done some very good things on offense. Defensively, they're going to work on some things. Clarion played a good ball game. Their offensive line played well. They had a couple of running backs. So I don't. I think Lock Haven, when they look at the film, Coach Tanner is going to make the necessary adjustments, take the next step. So it'll be interesting to watch them. And as I said, mm -hmm. interesting we get back here in uh, October. Yeah, I think we're going to see a totally different team. Time of possession definitely on the side of Clarion. Over 40 minutes with the ball. And, and the lot, defense just on the field too much for Lockheed. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and although the night turned cool, mm -hmm. it's still a, a physically a tough to be on the field when there's 70, 80 plays run at you. Coach Tainer now talking to his team. It's going to be all positive in there. You know, you're going to look at the film. You're going to break it down. And uh, then you're going to go from there and see what happens. Um, some of the other stats for Lockhaven, 206 through the air, 195 on the ground, 18 first downs for the Bald Eagles. They did have seven yards per play, so that was a positive. They were able to run 53 plays for a total of 401 yards. 19 minutes of possession, the big one, four fumbles, one interceptions. And if we go as soon as we go back to the keys to the game, it was fundamentals, tackling and blocking. I think I think both, although early on on one on one, Lock Haven missed some tackles. Both teams did an okay job with it. That that was the first area. The second was turnovers. Lock Haven lost a turnover battle, I and mean, they just turned it over. Third was special teams. Both areas, both teams did a, a decent job in that area. And then, I think the team reaction to Coach Tanner was positive. There's some positive things they did at the end. They played hard, I thought. They made some mental mistakes defensively. That can be fixed. Well, it was fun. We off to a good start here on my TV WQMY. Great job by the crew. Long afternoon in the hot heat, but we survived. We survived the weather, and we're off to Lewisburg next week. There's your final score again. 40-13, the final. We'll be back here in Lock Haven in mid-October. We know the Bald Eagles will be a different team. Coach Tainer talking to his team, and when they came out, things looked pretty good. So for the entire Fox 56 sports crew, this is Bob I saying so long from Clinton County. This Fox 56 sports presentation of college football on my TV WQMY is brought to you by Lock Haven University.